Excellent. How's it going guys? Welcome to Paul's Hardware. It is Friday, at least as of the recording of this video, so I decided what better way to celebrate Friday than by unboxing a bunch of packages that have arrived. I do unboxing videos from time to time. I know of some of the stuff that's in some of these packages, and I know of one particular item that I think I'm really, really excited to unbox today, and that's what's in this cylindrical tube right here. So uh, stick with me and let's see what's in these packages. Item number one ships from North Carolina from a mysterious fulfillment center. And uh, as mentioned, I'm pretty sure I know what this is, but it is certainly packaged well. I will give it that. I was gonna start by saying this is the longest and uh, most cylindrical package I'll be opening today, but I don't think that actually is the case. But that's all that was inside. I met with the distinct smell of fresh rubber. And here we have a wrist attachment. Uh, so here's the instructions and safety card. This is an actual legit product from Gamers Nexus. They've gone so far as to do a piece of paper. A warranty, look at that. What's my warranty, Steve? Six months is the warranty that you're provided by Gamers Nexus for this mod band. All right, let's actually unravel the thing. Oh, there she is. Wow, that is, that is large, look at that. That will fit across an entire desk. It's actually too big. It's too big for my small desk right here. So this is obviously gonna be more suited for the, the work table over there. So the mod mat uh, serves several functions. First off, it's rubberized, so it provides you protective surface to work on. You can set products on. Uh, it's also an electrostatic discharge tool. So um, you can ground the mat itself. Uh, you have two cables that are included, this one here, and uh, it's actually got a snap on the bottom. So you can snap it directly to the corner of the mod mat, if that's your thing. And then you can take this cable and route that over and connect it up to something that's grounded. Uh, there's instructions in the manual for connecting it to an outlet via the center uh, screw on the outlet, assuming the outlet is grounded properly, of course. Um, and then once that is connected, you could also connect this up to like a large metal object, like a table or something, or even like a grounded power supply. I'll stick with the Gamers Nexus advice from the uh, instruction manual though, and um, advise that you just go with a, an outlet for that. You got the alligator clip, so you can use this anti-static wrist strap, like like a normal anti-static wrist strap and you can just alligator clip that to a large metal table or something that's grounded. Or you can remove that clip and you get a little plug here and then you can take that plug, insert it into the corner of this and then you can actually have up to two people working on the mod mat and they're both grounded. Practically speaking, if you're like me and like you never ground yourself because you know, YOLO or whatever. Oh God, I just said YOLO, I'm sorry. Uh, but you can of course use all the printed stuff here. It's, uh, so you got measurements, uh, you have both inches and centimeters. We have imperial and metric, that's nice. If you're taking apart a graphics card to put a, a water block on, you can put it right here and use this to arrange stuff. They have a layout of different thermal paste application methods for Threadripper, Ryzen, Skylake, and Coffee Lake, all of the modern CPUs. They've got layouts of the different M.2 lengths, so 22110 all the way down to 2230. It's just the length 110, 80, 60, 42, and 30. Of course, the Gamers Nexus logo, dead center there. And then finally on the right side, we have layouts of uh, typical pinouts for GPU, CPU, PCI Express, and ATX, uh, as well as PWM fan, Molex connector, SATA pinouts, and your, of course, ever important 24 pin, including the uh, ideal place to do a jump on the 24 pin. Uh, just telling you where you can connect up your jumper. Finally, a layout of diff different screws that you would typically encounter with the PC build. So all in all, pretty useful product here, I'd say, for anyone who is a PC enthusiast. If you build lots of computers, uh, useful in multiple ways. And just to be clear here, Gamers Nexus sent me this mod mat free of charge, uh, but they didn't pay me anything for an endorsement or anything like that. Steve did not promise me a lock of his hair, and there's definitely no way that a lock of Steve's hair will grant me with superhuman strength or intelligence or anything like that. So let's move on. Next product arrives from Adorama Camera. If maybe you can tell based on the box, uh, just to clarify, this, I already know what it is. It is the Hive Wasp 100C, uh, a new light. Uh, I did a video on lighting uh, where I went on a field trip over to Kyle's studio recently. And uh, this is just a few of the products that I've ordered have arrived. Not everything is here yet, um, but I'm so excited. I wanted to do an unboxing of it. I also want to point out that um, this is usually about $1,000 for this light. I ordered it from Adorama. I actually located it on Amazon. So I'm gonna post an Amazon link in this video's description. All my Amazon links are typically affiliate links, if you weren't already aware. Um, but I actually went and ordered this directly from Adorama. 
And I say this with full knowledge that if you go and order directly from Adorama, I will not get an affiliate commission for that. But I find that since Amazon is such a massive behemoth of uh, online retail right now, going to some of the small retails and just retailers and just buying directly from them, I support. So um, Adorama, I've had a good experience with in the past. They have not paid me for an endorsement or anything like that. I bought this directly from them and this was 850 bucks at Adorama as opposed to the retail price of a thousand. So this is the Wasp 1000C. It is an LED light that's also RGB, so I can change colors uh, and hopefully make things look a lot cleaner in here. There's the main housing. Here is the uh, reflector cup, maximizing the light output. Uh, we got a base piece right there. All right, so um, this seems pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and try to put it together without referencing the manual. So we do have a power supply brick here um, with uh, not an XLR plug, but it's the same housing as an XLR plug. It's also keyed, so that's nice. It'll only go in one way. Not a lot of length there on the cable, so I'm gonna have to figure out a, a good place to sort of hang that brick off of there. Whoa. Oh, it has active cooling. There's there's a fan that kicks on when I turn this. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, uh, Joe. Yeah, see it's bright. Yeah. All right, so um, it's a pretty this is a pretty bright light. I will say now that I've Joe has it's getting brighter too. It's powering up slowly. All right, so I've discovered I should click one at a time and then wait for it to change. It takes just a second or two to actually affect the color change. And I'm also feeling like I should probably read the manual and figure this thing out a little bit more. All right, so clearly there's a lot more playing around to be done uh, with my uh, Wasp 100C. You know what I think would be most useful would be if I had something to mount it on. Okay. For this part of the unboxing, I will definitely need to stand because uh, putting this on the table is probably not gonna happen. This is a three pack of C stands. Uh. Fine. <laughs> the C stands are made of steel. There's three of them and they all have an extra extension arm to hang stuff off of or do the suspended lights overhead and that kind of thing. They're all the same too. So uh, I'm gonna spare you guys go open in all of these and I'm just gonna open one of them. All right, so the C stand comes in three basic pieces. This is the base, also comes with an Allen wrench. Uh, and the base can collapse down. Uh, this is this is steel. Did I mention it's steel? That's why it's heavy. That's also why it's sturdy and durable. And that's also why it's able to actually support a lot of weight. So there we go. Goes out three ways like that. Tighten that down. And that gives us a nice stand. Also great for sandbags because the sandbag can just go pop like that. Just hangs right over the edge and it's, it's a much better solution than putting sandbags on the uh, flimsy stands that I currently have. Second piece here, vertical stand. Again, uh, larger, e more easily accessible rotary points here. It's actually even kind of spring-loaded, so it'll uh, provide you a little bit of assistance with the weight as you are raising or lowering stuff that's connected to the stand. There we have that. Oh, that's real. It's really quite energetic there at the top. Uh, that's pretty much the C-stand um, with the crossbar attached on top that can be slid down or over or whatever and it's got another attachment uh, point right here. So this can be used uh, between two C-stands if you're hanging something heavier or like Kyle's been using this just to drape his uh, diffusion gel over. And then of course with sandbags on the bottom this thing's a lot sturdier. It's even got a nice soft grip here that you can lift it and move it by. I've done the barest minimum to get the uh, wasp, the hive wasp set up. So let me know what you guys think. Is it impacting the look at all right now, uh, or do I need do I need to spend more time on that? Maybe bring Chris in to set things up. I should also read the rest of the manual. That would help. This box came from ASUS, and I was not sure what was it. It, what was gonna be in there? It is a Crosshair 7 Hero. The new Socket AM4 X470 motherboard, successor to the uh, Crosshair 6 Hero, which I've used in several builds. Uh, and I already, actually already have one of these. I got one of these in the shipment that came directly from AMD. But here it is, a quick look at least at the Crosshair 7 Hero. Uh, this board has really good power delivery. 
I'm told it's just better than the uh, Crosshair 6. The only thing it's missing uh, compared to the Crosshair 6, it does not have the uh, AM3 mounts. In the cro that's what I actually use in the Crosshair 6 Hero uh, in order to mount an older style cooler, the, the CR95, to get a fanless cooler on there for Ryzen. But beyond that, uh, it's got pretty much better everything, a couple M.2 slots. And it does also feature the fixed IO shield, uh, which is a trend that I'm very happy to say is becoming more and more popular. So hopefully we'll see that basically take off and like there won't be an IO shield anymore because they're all just pre-attached. And I have one final package for today. And this is a product that uh, we saw at Computex. It is the Liquifusion uh, all-in-one CPU cooler, and this one is unique because they have a different design for the pump and impeller, uh, and it's actually got a flow indicator built into it, uh, and they're also using addressable digital RGB LEDs as opposed to, you know, the kind that just has one RGB connection. Oh look, they've also included a coolant refill. This is the first time I've seen all-in-one liquid cooler that comes with a coolant refill. I wonder if that is something that they're gonna make a standard, or if they're expecting some level of evaporation with this cooler to take place. Not sure. An interesting thing about this one is that the pump is actually out here. Uh, this is the pump, very small unit, so that needs its own little plug for that. It's a 240 millimeter radiator, pretty standard size there. And then this over here is actually, I believe, the fill port. Yeah, so this is where you can refill this if uh, maybe it starts to show air bubbles in here or something. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. They have instructions that they've included as well for the refill. They want you to be very careful and test it outside of the case after you've done it, but um, still interesting. I'm, I'm not sure how many people are actually gonna go ahead and do that. Beyond that though, they've also included some Velcro straps, which is nice. Uh, this is all of your installation kit, including some thermal paste and a spreader, as well as a uh, metal chromed back plates here. Looks like those are for uh, Intel sockets. So that's included. Uh, and then as mentioned, digital RGB LEDs. So that means they're addressable so you can get a rainbow throughout the thing rather than just having it all be the same color. So if you happen to have a motherboard that has uh, the digital out, uh, I know like some Asus boards and some Gigabyte boards I've seen have started including that. It's not the four pin RGB header, it's a three pin RGB header. So it's got one for power and then the two other connections are just a digital connection. So you get more control over it and you can individually adjust the LEDs. This comes with an inline controller as well as a splitter. So you can actually plug individually the pump as well as each fan into it. So you are gonna deal with a decent amount of cabling for this type of thing, but uh, the included remote here, just a little handheld one, will let you cycle through some basic color patterns, uh, which are actually pretty nice. And also I would say uh, different, different and distinct from the typical just RGB uh, rainbow cycle that you would get. So I would say that's a distinct and different looking all-in-one liquid cooler from Enermax here. I can't speak to the performance of it, but it's definitely very unique when it comes to aesthetics, so. And guys, that pretty much wraps it up for my unboxing extravaganza today. If I'm being perfectly honest, I really just wanted to do an unboxing of the Gamers Nexus uh, mod mat because um, I thought that would be a nice troll for Steve. So thumbs up and everyone send this over to Steve and, and let him know how badly I trolled him. Uh, other than that, I'll post links to all this stuff that I've unboxed where relevance down in the video's description. So check that out if you're interested in any of these products. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you enjoyed this video and I'll be back soon with more tech news videos here on Pulse Hardware. Thanks for watching.